In 2017, more than 37% of adults in the U.S. got a flu shot. Roughly 80,000 died from the virus in the U.S. But in 1918, there was no flu shot, and at least 50 million people died around the world. That flu was known as the Spanish flu, and it is the second deadliest plague in history, after, well, the plague in the 1300s. So how exactly did a flu virus cause such massive death and destruction across the world? Well, it helps to pinpoint where it started, except we can't, not with 100% certainty. It could have been the disease-stricken trenches of World War I, or maybe the Shanxi province of China, where the outbreak of a respiratory disease in 1917 may have actually been the flu virus. Or maybe even Camp Funston, a military base in Kansas where 48 soldiers died of flu-like symptoms right before an outbreak. What we do know for sure is that the Spanish flu didn't start in Spain. So then why is it called the Spanish flu? Well, the flu broke out during World War I. Neither the Allied nor Central Powers wanted to admit to additional loss of life during a conflict that hinged on who had more manpower. So, all the nations involved in the war limited reports of the outbreak. In the U.S., some people were even afraid that reporting the flu might violate the Sedition Act of 1918, a law that prohibited disloyal language about the government and any action against the prosecution of the war. But Spain wasn't in World War I, and since they had no reason to hide anything, they reported their flu-related deaths. Even the King of Spain, Alfonso XIII, got the disease, but ultimately survived. So with the spotlight on Spain, U.S. and European news outlets nicknamed it the Spanish Flu. But the flu was spreading well outside of Spain, and with the large scale of infections going unreported, no one was prepared for the deadly pandemic it would become. Today, we know the flu is a highly contagious viral infection that spreads to the nose, throat, and sometimes the lungs. Symptoms such as fever, nausea, aches, and a sore throat are all standard. It's a terrible, possibly fatal disease that confines the afflicted to bed for days. But the 1918 flu was worse. Dark spots would appear on the body before the skin turned blue from a lack of oxygen in their blood. And patients would bleed from their noses and ears as they suffocated on their own blood and fluids. In 1918 at Camp Funston, U.S. Army Dr. Roy Grist remarked, It is only a matter of a few hours then until death comes. And it is simply a struggle for air until they suffocate. It is horrible. The outbreak at Camp Funston affected more than a thousand soldiers, and around 40 died. But those 1,000 were part of one million soldiers throughout the United States who were all in contact with one another. Those soldiers were then sent overseas in the spring of 1918, carrying flu microbes that would spread faster than the war itself. In the fall of that same year, a second wave of flu cases started spreading across the U.S., hitting both military and civilian centers. Doctors had never before seen such a deadly strain of influenza. To make matters worse, knowledge of viruses at the time was limited, since microscopes of the day were not powerful enough to see them. People began blaming the Germans, claiming they were spreading poison clouds or that Bayer, which was a German-owned company, had infected their aspirin. As the flu spread in America, even public health officials began to lie about the state of things. Like Philadelphia's public health director, Wilmer Crusen, who in September of 1918 declared, no concern whatever is felt, after a Navy ship from Boston arrived with infected passengers. The next day, two sailors died. The day after that, 14. There was little to be done to stop the spread of the virus. Doctors had no way to create a vaccine, antiviral drugs, or even antibiotics for secondary infections like pneumonia. Instead, most prevention efforts focused on quarantine and personal hygiene. Schools, churches, and other public gathering spaces were shut down in many cities. In San Francisco, they went so far as to fine people $5 who didn't wear protective masks, dubbing them mask slackers. And in the end, after only one year, the death toll was catastrophic. To put things in perspective, more than 16 million people died in World War I. The Spanish flu killed at least 50 million people, and some believe the number may be closer to 100 million. In the U.S. alone, 675,000 people would die from the flu. That's more American deaths than American soldiers who died in World War I. It's more than all the deaths of American soldiers in the 20th century combined. And in October of 1918, 195,000 Americans died making it one of the deadliest months in U.S. history. 
Death was so prevalent between the war and flu that life expectancy in the U.S. dropped by 12 years. Even Woodrow Wilson was affected by the Spanish flu, having collapsed during the Versailles Peace Conference with flu-like symptoms. The outbreak of Spanish flu is what spurred the development of a vaccine, although scientists didn't even isolate the influenza virus for study until 1933, 15 years later. The first flu vaccine was developed in 1938 and was later given to U.S. soldiers in World War II. After the war, it was finally used to treat the American public.